Survivor News. 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 Dot dot dot. And we are back this week with your Survivor News. And of course, you know, if we're doing Survivor News, we have to have the baby boy, the Jack, to the Atkins, fresh off of his fight in Las Vegas. How we doing, Jack? Good. Uh, a lot of people thought I wasn't going to be here after that fight for this episode, <laughs> but I'm happy to say we survived. Uh, we put up a decent effort, and now we're back in the ring with Bryson Noel to talk some. Did you win? Yes. No, but I was not expecting uh, you to be honest. <laughs> I need the video. I need to see the video. It's out today. Uh, I'm uh, waiting uh, for it to uh, to drop. The live stream. I mean, drop. It's not necessarily my best moment, but you know, we got to get that bag regardless. So, right. <laughs> I, I barely trained, and my opponent apparently trained a lot, but I still made things interesting. So that it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, we're proud of Jack. Okay, he won the moment he stepped into the ring. Uh, now, let's also welcome to back to the Purple Pants podcast. I believe she currently is a world record or United States record <laughs> holder. Okay, because in my heart, it's the world. Yeah. But on the books in the United States for the long jump, let's welcome season 43, Noelle Lambert back to the podcast. Hello, hello. So excited to be back. It, it Thanks for having me. To have you. If I would have known that you were practicing for long jumping, I, you know, no, I've been long jumping hoes, okay, <laughs> <laughs> for years, girl. I could have, I could have told you some tips. Oh my god. Well, it was actually funny because recently, Mark, my fiance, came to long jump practice with me. You know, your favorite person, okay. uh, Bryce. So we and you know, I was, I taught him how, and I was like, these are your marks. Not expecting him, and he literally in the first jump, he beat me. I was just like, All right, whatever, you have two legs, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, shout out to Mark, we love Mark as well. Uh, how have you liked before we get into this episode, Noelle? Thoughts on the season thus far? Thoughts on the season, so I really like it. I know that, like, in the beginning can be tough with you know, character development and like exciting and flashy moves. Um <laughs> But I think, I mean, especially last night's episode, it's finally like you're starting to see the gameplay. You know, it's really tough watching week after week and watching one tribe struggle really hard um, because, you know, you just feel for them and you're just like, that sucks. Like, I can't even imagine. So it's just like every every episode you were hoping. But I think the characters are great. I think they did a great job casting. And I'm just, I'm, I'm excited for it to keep going because... You know, in the beginning, I was like, all right, this is a little slow. But, you know, I mean, my season was obviously a little slow as well, as just like everybody else. So now it's finally starting to get into, like, the nitty gritty. And we got to see some great game moves in last night's episode. So it just gets me more excited for the season. And, yeah. Uh, last thought. What was your thought when God blindsided Banu? When who blindsided? When Lord oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's like the one thing you, I, I just don't think he should have done. But I love, bon I actually got to meet Banu last night at a Survivor really? Waltz party. And he was just like in, like you would see in the scene. He was so... He was so incredible. He had a great light to him. You know, he was very emotional and like grateful for like the experience. But you know, I mean, you can't blame God for <laughs> your own mistakes um, because you just the whole time you were every everything that he was doing. He was like, "Why are you telling these people?" And then like giving yourself up like that makes no sense. Um, but yeah, I thought that was hilarious. I mean, when he got down on his knees, I was like, wow, like this is getting serious. It was. <laughs> but all love to Banu. I yes. mean, you know, he he did a he did a great job. He did the best that he could do. And, you know, his at least, I mean, he still had he came out of it with a great experience, which is all that matters. We love it. And we love Banu here. Uh so Jack, what you got for us this week? Yeah, I mean, we we get we kick off the episode coming back. To Yanu after they lose Banu. And I mean, they're really just kind of talking about how miserable they are. 
uh, after losing all these challenges and still not having fire, really not having any food. Q says that he's considering quitting, but then in confessional, he also says that uh, he sort of is just saying that to keep Kenzie on her toes. Uh, I mean, I got first and foremost, guys, do we think Q was actually considering quitting or do we think this was all part of his strategy? So on my season, season 28, uh, we had a typhoon. Uh, and so, you know, I was only out there for 11 days, but uh, it rained for three days nonstop. Like, no sun, just nothing but rain. And I can remember being pulled for a confessional. And I remember uh, there them asking me, like, how are you doing? What are you thinking? And I'm like, if no sun comes out tomorrow, uh, we can pack this up. So <laughs> I, I really think that in that moment, Q could have potentially been serious, serious about that. Because when you are just socking, soaking wet, your underwear, your socks, your clothes, no food, no nothing. Like, I really do think that uh, it gets the best of you. And him even saying that, that's like the second time that Q has said that, you know, I love me some Q. Shout out to the Q pillow. Uh, but it just makes me, again, I go back to Jelinski uh, and the hourglass. And was it really Jelinski or could it have been Q? That's just kind of what I, I, I think a little bit. Yeah, I mean, when he said that, I was just like, oh, my God, I swear to God, if this happens. But I think with the mentality that Q has, you know, just being a competitor, I don't think I think I think what he said was with, you know, saying it to Kenzie to kind of throw her off is kind of like a little bit smart. Um, so like it doesn't because in the back of her mind, she it's putting, you know, her at ease because she's saying, OK, well, maybe we don't have to go to travel. Maybe he'll just quit or something like that. So I could never see someone like Q doing it because he's been such a fighter up until this point. Uh, when it came out of his mouth, I was just like, this can't be real. But I can't imagine multiple days in a row with rain. We did it. Luckily, my season, like it rained. It, it did rain, but it didn't rain multiple days in a row. And I always think back to, you know, your season and like other seasons where just for days. And I remember waking up just after one night, it was pouring rain and everything was soaked and I was freezing and I couldn't like just that one moment I was freaking out and it rained for just for one night. So it does put things into perspective and it makes, it really makes you think cause it really breaks you down to your core. And that's when you learn the type of person you are and if you can actually battle through it. <laughs> right. I'm in between on Q because I agree he's a competitor. I don't think he would quit the game, but I do think him going to confessional and saying all this stuff was probably the, you know, maybe the producer asking questions was like, so you mentioned earlier you were thinking about quitting. And then he was probably like, no, 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 Never no, mind. no, no. Uh, Yeah. I didn't want to quit. That was all strategy. Whereas maybe in the moment, and sometimes I'm sure you joke, you're like, if it keeps raining, you could get me up out of here. And it's like, you might not actually mean it, but you might be, you know, not feeling your best. Um, but was it a good strategy? I don't think saying you want to quit is ever really a smart strategy. Uh, more on this topic. And I mean, Noel, on your season, your uh, starting tribe did lose quite a few challenges. Uh, when you're in that headspace of like you're losing a lot of challenges and then you're adding in these factors like they don't have Flint. They don't. Have, it's really rainy. Is there anything that you think they could be doing to, and obviously later in the episode we see finally they get a win, but in this moment, is there anything they could actively be doing to sort of right this ship? Is there anything they could be changing around camp about their attitudes, about their approach to challenges that could help them stop this sinking ship? Or is it just one of those things where the momentum is so bad that they're kind of just in desperate situation until they swap or they merge? Yeah, I mean... It's tough because you want to think that like there there must be something, but you can't like force a group of people to like bond or like coming up with these different things. And that was never our issue. Like when we would lose, we would go back to camp and like we st I loved every single person on my tribe. Like and I remember Cody just always joking around and like, yeah, it sucked because nobody wanted to go to tribal. Nobody wanted to stay up that late. Everyone just wanted to go to bed when the sun went down. But we would always lock in before challenges and i really think it's just a momentum thing and it's really just you know like what can we be doing better um 
and talking about people's strength. I mean, I was talking to Bruce last night and he was saying, you know, before every single challenge we had it mapped out. Like what I'm just like, it's really tough to do that when you don't exactly know what you're doing and you do get a scroll, like you get a little bit of a hint, but you, you don't know exactly what you're doing. So I don't know for me, I'm in, we didn't, we, we got Flint and from the first challenge and then we got it taken away from us and we didn't have fire. I mean, not as long as, you know, they didn't have fire, but we didn't have fire for, you know, seven days, I think. And it was honestly like in our heads, we were like, we don't have any food to cook anyways. Like, it's not like we need, it's not like we need the fire. Like we have a machete, we can eat coconut. So it was mostly just a, like a motivation thing with, you know, like we need to get going, um, especially after losing NECA and losing, you know, our second or third challenge in a row, we were just like, we're not losing, we're done. And we would just lock in. Like from the second we left the island to go to, to go to the challenge, we were just like, and I just, I could always hear Cody like just talking to himself and it would just light a fire within me. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. Like we're all gonna go to bat for each other. And yeah, but it's, it's tough with, you know, with the morale down and especially if you're like them and just continuously like, I can't imagine not having a machete for how many days was it? Nine or 11? I think 11, yeah. How are they even eating a coconut? Like, it's very difficult to open up a freaking coconut <laughs> with a machete. So how are they doing it without one is very impressive. And I just think that deserves recognition alone. Um, because you're thinking, I mean, one what we were thinking of too, and what I found out afterwards is that these other tribes um on my season they were i mean they were eating at the blue tribe they had all the all these different food on the island that they could find so they were eating like three meals a day we were only eating coconut and so it was just like when that happens and you're not fueling yourself it's it's tough I also think it's like a mind trick, right? Uh, if you are the tribe that is not eating, does not have Flint, and these other tribes are thriving, when you actually do pull out a W and the other tribe loses, I feel like it sh it's the momentum completely shifts. Oh, yeah. And I love that as a viewer. Uh, I always wish that the momentum would shift a little close, like a little farther away from the merge than right at the merge. But yeah. I also love the the mind trick that it does. Uh, another thing that I thought was really interesting that I think you brought up was Kenzie. Every time Kenzie comes around uh, <laughs> with Tiffany and Q, uh, they be like, what y'all talking about? And Tiffany be like, Salmon, what y'all talking about? Uh, we talk like I I thought that's funny, right? But I also think in real life, like that's actually good ish on Kenzie, though, right? Especially if it's only three of y'all, especially if you know that Tiffany and Q are a tight knit. I feel like one of the my biggest mistakes on uh Kageyan was that like I didn't ask enough questions, right? Like I would see stuff going down and I would just like watch it from afar. So I love the fact that Kenzie has established like anytime I pull up on y'all, what y'all talking about? Because one, you expect it, and two, it's like I'm gonna interject myself into every conversation. So when Q first said it, I was like, oh, no, Kenzie, no, no, no. But the more I think about it, it's like, I'm not mad at Kenzie. Like, what's popping? What y'all okay. talking about? My yeah, new I'm form. here. I'm right. here. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said that, Bryce, because I thought the same thing. I was, it kind of remind me of uh, Edge of Extinction, where they, they showed this sequence of Aubrey being like, we should start a dialogue. And that how uh, they kind of made fun of her for that. But for this, I'm like... That's a pretty normal thing to do. Like, if I remind sometimes, you know, you're at like a, a party and maybe you don't know that many people and you see your friend talking to someone that you don't really know. I feel like it's pretty normal to go over and be like, oh, what are you guys chatting about? Like, and then that it's better than just going over and just kind of standing there quietly and just waiting for. So I'm like, what is she supposed to do? Like, you, you join a conversation, you want to know what's being discussed so you can, you know, hop in on it. Uh, so I, it was funny that they showed her doing it kind of like the same exact way every time. But I, again, I'm, I'm not mad at it either, Bryce. I think that's a very reasonable. I'm going to go out on a limb and say she didn't even realize she was doing it. Like, and it was just like a social cue. Like, it's just like, okay, I'm, I need to go and just make sure that I'm still having conversations. So what's, what's the best way to just interrupt a conversation? What are you guys talking about? 
Like I like it. I didn't. I thought it was. I thought it was hilarious. And uh, props to how they edited it because it was. It was really funny. <laughs> it was funny because even the way they edited it, right? Uh, Tiffany would all. Tiffany's response would always be so quick, right? And so, so quick. Me, me as a viewer, I'm all like suspicious right were they actually talking were they actually talking ish uh because tiffany was like on it so good but again to you future survivors bust up the conversations walk up on them don't let stuff happen and you're just a spectator uh, well, even if yeah it's also a great job on tiffany's part because she's making her feel comfortable like she and she's answering right away so she always had something like right. immediately yeah. and so that that's a great social game in itself with Tiffany and just being able to kind of, because I like know that feeling like someone comes or like, say if you're talking about someone and then they come and they're like, and then you just immediately switch the subject because you don't want them to hear what you were actually saying or make it look suspicious. So I thought that was, I thought that was brilliant on Tiff's part. Yeah. I think that could be a very telling thing in survivors when you do walk up on a conversation, even from like the, the game that we did together, Bryce, you kind of learn, you know, if you show up and you're like, what's up guys. And they're just like, Oh, we're just talking about how hungry we are. It's like, okay, you were probably talking about something else. Uh, and if you don't have an actual answer for me, it was probably about me. Uh, or if someone, you know, you walk to someone up to someone before tribal, and you're like, what are you guys talking about? They're just like, oh, we're just talking about options for the vote or whatever. It's like, what, what do you think? You know? Uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, it's, it's nice of Tiffany to be quick on her toes and like give her something that seems maybe it was what it like that's the nice thing is we don't know because she did such a good job of coming up with something whether it was the truth or not the truth i i also love though like because you know i gotta gotta talk issue q i love how q never said anything right like, <laughs> like q was just like i don't care i don't care <laughs> uh so yeah like Q, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> and again, good on Tiffany for reading the room because, like, I, I'm sure Tiffany was probably like, Q ain't gonna say nothing. So, but, uh, but yeah, that was funny. Uh, and then we kick it over to the Sega tribe, the Green tribe. I mean, we see Charlie and Ben are continuing to bond, and even though their tribe's been winning, they're still enduring these elements that we see Yonu going through of of the tough weather, mm -hmm. and that's bringing Charlie and Ben close together. Um, which also causes some concern for the girls that maybe they're losing Charlie to Ben. But other than that, we also see, you know, some fun salsa dancing going on on the beach. Uh, a lot of what we've seen from Sega is just these little funny moments that are completely not strategy related. Uh, I don't know. What did you guys think of this? Did you guys ever do any, any dancing out on the island? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I, I did any dancing. I thought it was hilarious with Tim bringing up the fact that he has not gone number two. Uh, and, you know, he was waiting. I think that that also was a disappointment of mine on Survivor where I always heard of aqua dumping. So I was like, oh, like, you know, a new experience. But you forget when you're on Survivor and you're eating so little, uh, your body isn't producing much waste. Uh, I think they are spot on with Ben, like, right? Every episode, every time we get to see more of Ben, I just love Ben, right? Like, he's just like uh, the the cutest little, like, just how he talks, just how short he is, just how like upbeat and positive he is. Uh, and I think that they're right to identify him as a target because you could be a physical threat, but also a social threat and a social threat in the way that Ben is, where it's like, he's just, funny he's like light-hearted not necessarily always talking about game i think that that is mm. such uh, a threat that isn't talked about enough and so um i love to see him and charlie but it does make me a little nervous and y'all know i love dr maria and so when we get to this part i gotta i feel like i i don't know dr maria what is you doing uh because i am not happy how this episode ended because i feel like Dr. Maria gave up some power. Yeah, I mean, we can get more into that as the, you know, we get into the vote, but uh, it was definitely, Charlie definitely was able to make himself the the center of the action this, this episode. Um, one, and that, he, obviously he and Maria were in the swing position. That kind of brings me to the other thing that happens in this sequence of 
Tim is very suspicious of Jem. And Jem says she thinks she's doing a great job of lying. She's not even smiling like she does when she lies back home. So, uh, but now there's this kind of this Tim versus Jem feud going on. And of course, we know Charlie and Maria are in the middle. Um, Before even that, though, right? Uh, I clutch my pearls when they're like sitting by the sand and I don't know if it's Tim or Charlie but someone's like if someone actually found uh the idol and hit it and making a search for two days like that's not cool I would <laughs> like, be pissed I that if that was me and like someone did that and I like came to the conclusion of oh my god someone just buried this and made us look I would be livid and I would be trying to find out who it was and I wouldn't let it go I would literally like talk about it because my thing is like I think Jen I don't I don't know if Jen did that like I think she was just trying to be funny and like maybe just oh like let's do a joke like let's make every and then she thought that everyone would forget about it like no look but why would somebody stop looking for a beware advantage if they found it you know what I, you know what i mean so i was just confused by the whole thing as a whole when she did it and i'm thinking are you not looking long term like are you not because people aren't going to stop looking for this thing it's survivor like nobody's just going to find it and be like oh it's not underwear yeah, okay let's stop digging that's not how it's how it's going to work so right when she did that i was like this just blew up her game I, I said it last episode. I was just like, why, why would she do this? It makes no sense. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like a, it's, it's not like it was act, an actual hidden idol or like a fake idol, because if that was the case, brilliant. Like, and if you can get that, if you can do that. And another thing I don't like, I don't know if it's like a new era thing, but like when someone plants a fake idol, why do they try to get the whole group to go looking so that one person can find it while everyone's looking you know what i mean like if i if i were to ever try to plant a fake idol i would plant it very obviously and then i would just walk away and i wouldn't say anything to anybody and i would wait for someone to get it and then that because then i would be like okay i don't even know who has this so when they play it, it's gonna be even that much funnier and something like that you know what i mean like i don't like the group idol hunts i i hate it when we when we did it on my season I just, I pulled the Maria. I, no, not Maria. Sorry. I pulled the Liz when she's just sitting in the shelter. Like, I'm done. I was, I'm was, done. <laughs> That's literally, that was me. I, it, cause I already assumed somebody had already found it. I was like, somebody, I, I thought Cody had found it very early on. So I was like, I'm not looking. I'm not wasting my energy. I'm not wasting my time. Like, <laughs> you guys go have some fun. Well, I'm really glad that you had this opinion about Gem's move because. I said the same thing last episode, uh, and I, I saw so many people online last week say, "Oh, this this bumps gems up, gems stock, winner stock up so much. What a great move!" I mean, I saw uh, shout out to I think it's Survivor Fact Checker on Instagram. They do like a weekly Player of the Week vote. Gem won that vote last week, and oh, she Bryce did. Knows, yeah, there's as Bryce knows, there's nothing I love more than being proven right on the Purple Pants podcast. And this week, I think, proved exactly everything I said last week about why this was not a good move, proved all of those things right. So um, I'm going to disagree with y'all, right? Like, I feel like it was a good move, right? I also feel like it snowballed a little <laughs> bit, right? In the sense of... Because... How does she pivot out of this, right? So say say we don't know what happens, right? And this mounted tension has mounted. How does she get out of it, though? Like, right? So there's nothing that she could necessarily do. That's why it's a bad move. But no, <laughs> uh, but no, but listen, but listen, y'all. I feel like the move was good. I feel like her execution at the end, I don't feel as though she read the room enough because if she could have, if she would have played her idol and got Ben out or something, I think her stock would have went up even higher. Oh, absolutely. Uh, no, but I actually disagree because, look, I, I I get what you're saying. I think on like in a vacuum, that move of the the planting it whatever could be a move that works out well for somebody. But I think here, a like you said, she worked herself into a corner, and how does she get out of it? B, the problem is as soon as she plays her idol, everyone's going to know that she was the one who planted the, the beware advantage and then lied about it to everybody. And like Noel said, I think it's kind of minor, but 
if I was digging for two days and you're lying to my face that you didn't, you didn't put it there, I'd be like, okay, that's the game. But like, also you just wasted like two days of my time. And I know that you're willing to do sneaky stuff and just lie to everyone's face about it. Uh, so I think even if Jem plays an idol this episode correctly, I still think she's very short for the game. Uh, and it just circles back to like last episode. It's like the analogy I made, and this is so stupid, is like, say you you tooted and it doesn't smell, right? And but then you're like, oh, I don't want any anyone to know that I tooted. Let me spray fart spray in the room, and everyone's gonna smell it and be like, oh, who did that? And they might be like, okay, Bryce did it, but they might be like, oh. Jack did it, and then now it's now there's this whole question and suspicion where it's like, well, if you don't say anything to begin with, you're gonna get away with a, a little too. <laughs> and so I feel like sorry, it's such a weird analogy, but I feel like Jem wanted to make and, and was it fun of her? Yes, but was she overplaying and it was completely unnecessary? Absolutely. And just to tie it all together, the biggest issue I had with it last week was that this suspicion is now on Tim. But if people think Tim have an idol. They're not going to want to vote for him. And so this idea that they had to split between Tim and, and Ben, A, would have been unnecessary if nobody was worried about an idol. You wouldn't need to split. And then because they don't want to vote for Tim, now Ben is the primary target. But people love Ben, so they don't want to vote for Ben. So that's how it all circles back on a gem. Whereas if she doesn't do this, I think Tim goes. But see, I feel like that was Jim's a part of her plan was to put a target on Tim and Ben because people love Ben. Yeah, we love him, but he also is a target. Another thing I wanted to say, random of random. Wait, but, but, so, but, but Bryce, if you say, I just if you want to say it was part of her plan to do that, no, I'm saying no, I, I, again, I I reluctantly agree with you and Noel. <laughs> that it might not i think the idea was great sure the execution right. though yeah the it execution, was good tv it was good right. tv good do i TV. think she thought about it long term no i don't because i mean listen and i could 100 percent attest to doing something like this in like the spur of the moment be like oh my god this would be such a good idea and not think it all the way through like i would 100 yes. do that i own that but in my in what i'm thinking of is just in her head, did she just think that everyone was going to stop looking? Like, did she just think, like, I thought, I think it would have been brilliant for her to wait until she got the idol and then to make a mm -hmm. fake idol and then bury, do something like that. That like would have been, oh my God, it would have been incredible. But it's, it's, I no, don't know. I would, I was just like, I'd be so pissed. And I, I feel like, Another crucial part is she should have had a partner. I think if she would have had a partner in on it with her, I think that that could alleviate some of the distrust or like dispersing the thought process. Now, wait, real quick, because I just, Jack had me think of something. You're right, when I was man. growing up, you know, I'm the youngest of five siblings, and my mom used to always buy this air. Uh, air freshener for the bathroom. So, you know, whenever someone would use the bathroom, uh, but as an adult now, Anytime I smell that air freshener, I feel like who used like you know what I mean. Like I just associate that smell now with the smell. Uh, the smell. Like it's like light. It's like when you you have the stomach bug, and then your parents are spraying lights all around the house. Now you can't even smell Lysol because you'll just instantly think of throwing up. I get it. Right. Yeah. Or you know, you go on a date with somebody, you go to their house, and like that's their air freshener that they use, and you like, okay, oh this my god, work. yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> this ain't gonna work. Your house smell like. But, <laughs> yeah. but ultimately, yeah, no, I, I agree with you in the fact that you know it's a fun idea. Could it do some good things for your game? Sure, but I really think you're right that if she didn't think it all the way through, and now we see those later repercussions that you don't think about initially of like. If I play my idol, they're going to know it's me. Or now there's a target on people that now they're scared to vote for. That could bounce the target over to me. Or even I said last week, it's like if a Maria finds it by herself and opens it up and now she th thinks she doesn't have a vote, that might cause them to you know shift towards someone that they feel is like a safer option to go with. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I just feel like Jem was in a good spot. So it's like, why are you adding these curveballs into your own game that like sure it could work but it could also make you go home 
Here's yeah, a question. Yeah, I do. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Do you feel like this is a new era issue where we have these players playing so hard? Because this also makes me think of like soda a little bit, where like I love soda, but I mean, the edit that we're continuously getting uh, after last week and the week before that, where it's like she's great, but people are like, ugh. She could win. Like, you know what I mean? Do you feel like if this is uh, of the new, new era, like, do you feel like this is not a curse, but maybe a symptom of the the 26 days, this yeah. need to kind of like make a mark? I, and I think it, it, I think the thing I would diagnose it, associate it the most with is actually just the way that they've changed casting, where they're casting a lot of big fans. And, you know, I actually think it's a very, like, I think the thing here is that these bigger fans are thinking about, what's going to be like fun in the episode? Like what's going to be entertaining television and make me maybe get more screen time. And I actually don't mind that mentality from a player like Jem, who is on a tribe that for all intents and purposes is pretty boring gameplay wise. I mean, like Sam, they they have a, tribal, they, a lot of their scenes are just like fun, wholesome scenes. And she's throwing this curveball in there that is now adding some layers of gameplay. So for TV, but, that's yeah. absolutely good TV. Uh, and I appreciate Gem. If there was more gems on Survivor, I think Survivor would be more fun. But for her personal gameplay, she, I think she got caught up with this uh, this notion but of like see, creating entertainment. I also Super. think Jack is a symptom of not going to tribal, right? Where you sure. aren't playing the game so much and your tribe is so kumbaya and you have someone like a gym who's like i'm ready to play i need to make sure i have my plan a and b in place uh i also feel like that could be a symptom of being on a winning tribe as well totally and it's, I a it's a blessing and a curse of you know having 46 seasons of survivor and having all these super fans do the show i agree with you i think it like i would love to see you know, half the cast not be diehard fans of Survivor. Because I look at my season and I look at somebody like Cody. Cody's not the biggest diehard Survivor fan, but he was, if not, like one of, if not the only, like most entertaining person on our season. Like the, every, the camera was glued to him. And we had to explain a lot to him, like during the, during the season, like, oh, like, like, or like, this isn't like, this is how this works and blah, 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 blah. But like, I think it would just be great because it also makes it so much harder to win the game of Survivor now. When you, when people are going on these seasons, these, these newer seasons, every single person's a super fan. So every single thing that you do is calculated. Like every single, like, and it could be looked at like, oh my God, okay, she's smart. I mean, look at how much people lie about their occupations and everything. It's crazy because people are just like, oh, I'm in, I'm in sales, I'll get voted off. Or I'm a lawyer, like, you can't trust me. A professional athlete, like, oh, get them out. So it's, it just shows you like, I mean, it's, that's what you get when you have yeah. such an incredible show go on for so long. Um, but yeah, I would love to see more Cody's on the show because yeah. he was he was TV gold. He was literally like 100% per perfect. And I miss the not strategical vote outs. I miss a pure emotional vote out that maybe doesn't make the best sense, but it now changes the landscape of the game. So like I'm I'm with you on that, Noah. Yeah, let's let's vote. Let's get get rid of Shot yeah. in the Dark first of all because i love the yeah you're going home tonight you can't you can't do anything about oh. i think that i love cutthroat like okay oh. you know, no, jack jack responds how, how do you feel about noel's statement i agree with noel I, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait i thought you liked shot in the dark jack no not not really no i don't i don't mind noel it but i up. he switch it up <laughs> Yes, you know that I complain about a lot of the new era stuff probably more than uh, right. Than people, but so. I always thought that you felt like the shot in the dark is kind of like I think that the shot in the dark creates opportunities to like create has I think the shot in the dark on its own is not great, but I think that the idea of the shot in the dark yeah. can make votes a lot more complex. Absolutely. And, uh I think that adds some layers to the gameplay, but I do think that people especially if i were to be a player is like the idea of the shot in the dark when is kind of a, when, is kind when of you will be sure. a player. 
like when I'm like, I agree with Noel. It's like, why do I have to worry about this? Like random one in six BS. Like, um, yeah. Like, then, why can't I just tell somebody like it, it just makes it, I mean, again, but it makes the game that much harder, which I understand in a 26 day season, like nothing is just handed to you. Nothing is easy. Nothing is as it seems like I get it. I get it, but I just hate it. Do you think they adapted? Do you think they made that adaptation because there are the super fans and the level of gameplay to kind of like have that? Ooh, what are you going to do here? Yeah, I think I think in their head they're like, well, this makes it harder for people because they can't just blatantly be like, I'm voting you off, and you, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and I do think it makes it interesting because I mean, we saw last season Caleb used it; it was incredible. But like before that, it did. Um, I'm spacing was he wasn't the first person that it worked for, right? Didn't it? It worked for um, Jamie it worked for in Jamie. It, it worked for Jamie. It wasn't. It didn't save her. She was already saved. Yeah, she was already saved. So I mean, it's I don't know. It's tricky because it's just like I don't like it because. I just hated lying, like, and I hated, I hated just like, w like having to hold people's hand, and like before, you know what I mean? Like, not like that in that sense, but like, like when it was between either myself or Neca for that third episode vote of my season, like I couldn't say anything to her, just because. Well, I needed to pretend, pretend like I was going home, but like I could never be like. Yeah, like it's it's you and just risk with her using shot in the dark, blah 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 blah. So it's yeah, it's just oh, tricky. wait, so, time out. So if there wasn't a shot in the dark, you would have told NECA no. <laughs> oh, okay. I love NECA, I oh. love NECA to death. And no, because it wasn't that wasn't the reason. The reason why was because I knew that you know her number ones were turning on her. So like I had to pretend like I was going home and like I was like, I'll play my shot in the dark. And like, I just, I hated that, but NECA is just the greatest human on this earth. I love her to death. I mean, that was like, that was the hardest vote off, I think, of the, the entire season for me personally. I mean, that was just, it was, especially because it was on Mother's Day and we were just terrible human beings. Um, but I was just like, it's you or me, I can't go home yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, yeah. it's, it's tough. To what you're saying, Noel, though, I think I, I want to like extrapolate it on it a little bit. Is that it's an issue that I I think myself and a lot of other people have had is that in this new era, they love to throw in these kind of like gameplay twists and turns more so than anything else. And obviously, there's a lot of big fans of the show, people that are strategic, that it's sort of like let's see how they navigate it, um, which I think in theory is very interesting. The problem is I think a lot of these twists that they throw in. Are actually pretty straightforward and that's the, something i like about the beware advantages to some extent is that if you give a good player a beware advantage i think that they can navigate it well whereas if you give a bad player a beware advantage it, it allows them to like play worse i like it i like an advantage that in the hands of a great player will let them separate themselves from the pack positively but in the hands of someone bad it's gonna go poorly um so as far as like beware advantages go I like those. Whereas the shot in the dark is sort of like, you know, you think you're going to go home, you just play it. It doesn't really yeah. take any uh, special maneuvering. It kind of reminds me also of like the hourglass where it's such a blatantly obvious thing to smash the hourglass. And Bryce, this is not even an argument of like whether it should or shouldn't be in the show, but just for like Erica or even I think Roxroy had it in 42. Um, it's a no brainer to smash it. So it's not interesting to watch because you're like, they're going to smash it. And even like the idol nullifier back in the day, never liked it because you could just put it on whoever you wanted. It wasn't you block who's playing it. It's block. It's blocking who was being played on. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to vote someone out and make sure that it works well, you just idol nullifier them. Whereas say we wanted Bryce out and I wanted to save Bryce and I had an idol. Well, if I, if I play my idol for Bryce, he still goes home because you nullify it. I would like a mechanism where it's like you have to play it on the person who's playing it. So it requires some knowledge of like who mm -hmm. has idols. Yeah. Um, and or like, like knowledge is power. Like that, that I think is a brilliant advantage. It has just never been used correctly because it just, I mean, well, it's funny because when James got it for our season, he just, I don't think he ever planned on using it. <laughs> he literally was like, I'm not using it. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> 
Weirdly enough, well, that's I what I love about was... that one, though. It's like I love the fact that I what I love about knowledge is power is that it's not even you using it, it's the fact that you have it. I feel like it, it changes it, everything. it did, and it did. It kept people on there. I mean, like we were shuffling around advantages, idols, like nobody had their own thing, like because everyone was terrified. And I'm like, because it hasn't been brought back in the last couple seasons. And I want it to be because I just want it to be played correctly once because I think it's a great advantage that keeps p players on their toes. That's mm -hmm. self explanatory. It's not that hard. Like, it, there's nothing to it other than like, this is the. In, I just pray to God that, like, that if it ever does come back into place, nobody tells anybody that they have it right. or they don't yeah. open it in front of everybody because actually, then it's ruined. I think that the knowledge is power. I had some thoughts about it. Um, but I think the biggest thing is I actually think maybe it came in the wrong era because in this era of beware advantage, especially it was in the seasons where to get the beware advantage, you had to say public phrases that the people in the other tribes knew. Yeah. Every season that had the beware, the knowledge is power, everybody knew where the idols already were. And so it was really an overpowered advantage that the people that had it managed to fumble spectacularly um, because it's obvious, like, A, you keep it to yourself. B, you know where the idols are. It makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. But if you put it on a season like now where the idols right now are pretty secret, then I think it is more impressive to correctly play that because you really have to figure out information for yourself. Yeah. And it's um, just something to have like later down the line too. Yeah. Like, and just keep it in your pocket. So I wouldn't uh, be mad at a knowledge's power in a season where the idols are a little bit like less like 41 and 42 where they had it, it were the most blatant seasons of like these people have idols because they said phrases out loud that everybody knows about. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That is true. I agree. I think if we're talking about what we, what we are complaining about in the new era, I feel like, you know, something that like just throws the game off completely is why even have tribal council? I feel like in this new era, it's like, why can't we go on the honor system? <laughs> Honestly, I don't even like tribal council anymore. Right. I like, I don't even like it. I don't even like watching it. Like, cause What's I'm just point? like, it's like, just a bunch of BS. Like, and it's just like schmooze. Like, Jeff asks, I mean, Jeff, at, like, Jeff is Jeff, but, like, I just don't like it because it's just, like, does it actually change people's mind? No. Do people know what they're doing before they walk in there? Yes. Like, and but, I, I mean, it's asking, part of Survivor. Like, it's, there's not, like, there's no, like, going around tribal, but I just don't even like it anymore. I don't know why. To your point about casting people that don't know the game as well, it's kind of nice to have a Banu who's going to go to tribal and just say everything on their mind and really blow up the game. Um, and we've talked about that sort of element of casting a lot on these Survivor News. And but we, see, we and I love that, right? Like, which is why, again, back to the point that we already have made, but I'm going to say it again, why I love a chaotic player like Abani, right? Because you could have these strategic players that are – God, oh, we're going to move this and move that. And then you have a Banu who spills everything. Now it's like, well, how really good of a player are you? Like, can you divert? Can you call an audible? Can you switch it around? Like, that's like, that's why I, I, I love players like Manny Bush. You know? Yeah. But I, I like that we uh, digressed into that sort of bigger advantage conversation. But now we're over on Nami and um, Hunter finds the beware advantage. That I guess Randon, you know, I forgot that Randon had it initially, but he left with it, so it got rehidden. Um, and also Venus, funny moment, just tells Hunter to his face, like, "You're a really good meat shield. I'm not going to vote you out." Oh, listen, uh, love her. <laughs> I believe you should tell more people should be like Venus. You see a meat shield, you tell them. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, I like a what's wrong? What's wrong with a meat shield? Oh. The more the better. I but I'm not mad at Venus, right? I one, you know, for the the meat shield. I also like how Hunter's like she won't leave me alone. Uh, Venus knows what you're doing, right? Like I felt like in that moment, Venus was kind of sort of trying to catch him in an act to be like, all right, what are we going to do? Uh, and what I also love here about Queen Venus this episode is that I like how she was the person on the outs. She had Randon. Randon is gone, and she's kind of like I feel like her game. She has the 
the most opportunities out here now because she is like a free agent. And we yeah. see this Kumbaya tribe given 11 days. It's not so Kumbaya. Uh, and so I'm really excited for where Venus is at in this game uh, and especially with the merge coming. But I wasn't mad at Venus pulling up on Hunter and kind of like staying around because it's like, yeah, what's up? Find it. Let's, let's try to get it together. But also shout out to Hunter for hunting uh you know it was dove season and he he shot that dove and found that idol also just a correction uh i think a couple episodes ago i said i i could be a dove if it's hunting season and they were like oh you don't hunt doves hunter has reportedly said that where he is from they do hunt doves and there is a dove season so <laughs> No, I, I love the fact that Venus is following him around too. I I think, and to kind of agree with you on that, she is like a free agent now. And so she's like kind of using, I, I've i loved her since the beginning um, just because of like people looking at her, like, they, like you're pretty, I don't want you in this game. I think that's, you know, such old news. I think it's dumb. Um, and you know who she reminds me of? She reminds me of just, she looks like Justine from my season. And she absolutely does. Oh my God. I'm up. Well, I'm, I, I love Justine and obsessed with her. And just, I, I, when I found out Justine was on my tribe, I literally thought to myself, I have to wake up to that every day while I'm going to look like actual, actual, actual hell. But no, I think they look like twins. So immediately I was like, okay, I love Venus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we head over to the immunity challenge um, where it's pretty straightforward. It's We have that big wooden obstacle course where each tribe member has to retrieve a key from three stations. Uh, and then they unlock this bag of sandbags with this pole. And then they use the sandbags and a slingshot to knock down targets. Um, but I, before recapping, I thought it was so, I was wearing my Jeff Probst shirt last night at the, uh, Johnny Fairplay's watch party. Uh, and Jeff Probst was out in full form last night. I thought it was funny when he was like, so second place gets immunity and a smaller set of baked goods. And then third place, otherwise known as, and everyone was like the losers. And he said, Oh, I thought you were going to say Yanu. And I, I thought that was so funny. Good. I would have, I would have slapped him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sassy, was, Sassy was, Jeffrey was wow. out. Okay, yes, yes. he did the say that he was going to be harder this season, but I would. That was that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, I love lo love the snarky Jeff. Um, and then yeah, so they all get through the structure pretty similar timing. Q does get caught up on the untangling of the sandbags, which allows Nami to continue their dominance as they knock down all of the targets pretty quickly, but Yanu is able to come back and we get this epic slow-mo um, shot of them stealing the deal, which I thought was a little bit much, but it was in good fun, I suppose. And so I thought Yanu it was me. First immunity challenge. I thought it was me, Jack. I thought like, cause I was like, <gasps> And, but I really thought that I was what like I thought my body just made it. and I'm not even lying like because I was like oh my god I want this to happen uh I didn't even realize that it was slow mo until after I like rewatched the episode I was like oh you thought you just were so into it that it like slowed down time <laughs> yes you you know sometimes if you, you take a little treat uh, before <laughs> you watch the fiber sometimes you feel like you got superpowers uh. That, that was part was hilarious because like it like everyone that I was watching with it was silence and Mark goes, What if they miss? <laughs> <laughs> but that, Noel, that's what I thought was gonna happen. I was like, you, why <laughs> are they doing them like that? <laughs> I I don't think they could have done it. I thought I thought it was edited. I thought it was edited great. I mean, like the slow-mo, the dramatic, like it was it was great. It was like a movie scene. Like yeah. on a reality television show, so give them that dramatic finish. That was that was great. I kind of wish that they did miss. It would have been sort of funny, um, but it would have been so funny. Uh, I just thought it was hilarious with Mark being like, "What if they miss?" I'm like, "Shut up!" <laughs> if they um, did miss, though, who do you think would have went home? Kenzie. Probably Kenzie. 
That reminds me, that Mark moment reminds me of um, Survivor 41. I was watching the um, third episode in Chicago with like Xander and Voce and Sarah Wilson. And, you know, Voce was hosting it. So I was thinking, all right, Voce is probably going to have a pretty good episode. Uh, and lo and behold, I think the, a, a first Voce vote comes at Tribal. And it's a very small room. There's probably 20, 25 people there. I'm like, yeah, right. Like, I was like, oh, he's totally going. Like, like sarcastically. <laughs> and, then, and then I remember Sarah Wilson turned to me and she was like, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and then he got voted out. And I was like, oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, damn. I don't think he cared. But I was like, oh, not my best, not my best moment. So um, but uh, so Yanni finally wins. Sieg is going to their first tribal council and Nami now also gets to choose three people for a journey. All the big dogs end up going. We have Hunter, we have Tim, and we have Q uh, heading to this journey. Bryce, you have, you have a thought? Uh, well, I love the bro alliance, but again, and I love to see them all, but my thing was like, Y'all the meat shields, like, cause I like in my mind, I'm like Tiffany's a beast. Uh, in my mind, I'm like Tevin's been killing it. In my mind, I'm like Charlie been doing his thing. Like, I just felt like. But sometimes it, a meat shield is just like I think a visible thing. I mean, in this day it, and age of Survivor. Yeah, I, I, if it's, I mean, okay. But I don't know. Well, also, I mean, some if that's the qualifications, on, then I don't think that that's the top. People have also already gone on journeys that can't go on another. I don't know if the people you No, know. but I'm just, what I was critiquing, again, because you know I just love to critique Q, uh, with Q being like, we the big three dogs. We the big, we the top three. I'm like, this ain't Drake. This ain't J. Cole. This ain't uh, Kendrick. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not sure, but I uh, I love the alliance. I Like, mm. I love it. Uh in my opinion, you know, because I always going to speak on Q, I felt like he was a bit, I was nervous at how vocal he was, right? Because I was like, how is everyone else going to perceive this? But I wasn't mad at the alliance that they made. Uh, no. Not and one. I feel bit. like we haven't seen that in the new era. We haven't seen like a, like, kind of like a journey alliance really come together. What, not that like kind of like the meat shields coming together as one like you know what i mean like that's a, that's a big like, that's a big meat yeah don't like i don't know brandon, like all the big dogs coming together brandon Cottom, danny and carolyn and carolyn but this one everyone uh, talks this one yeah everyone talks. yeah um, yeah well i wonder if this one the reason it was ended up being all the big dogs maybe hunter since his tribe one was kind of like these are maybe the people I want to go with. Although I think they did ask, um, maybe Sega was, they were like, Sega, do you have any volunteers? Tim was like, me? Yeah, so hey, Tim probably wanted to go. I'd maybe. be like, you're going oh, home. Right. <laughs> maybe he saw Q and Hunter and, and was kind of like, those, I could rock with those guys. Like, let me, so maybe it's just, maybe it wasn't intentionally like a meat shield thing, but more so like just people going on the journey that thought they'd get along. So they were like, let me jump at this opportunity. Um, for me, it was the people that they were bringing. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Hunter. I love Q. I love Tim. But honestly, the alliance that I want to happen is Tiffany, Maria, and Tevin. Like, I was like, oh, please make this happen. Like, that for me, I was like just loving the pieces that they were bringing together. That for me was the best thing. I agree with you that Q was a little bit vocal, but it was good of him to – he now knows Tim's closest ally and he knows Hunter's closest ally, which even if the alliance doesn't hold, that's very valuable information to have going into a merge. But for this journey, we have – something that we haven't really seen before is just like what if you – whoever's the biggest Survivor fan, get it, get in here and test your knowledge of the other two. You can just go home. Um, and then we see, you know, the challenge. Hunter has to chronologically order 20 – logos i love um, hunter though uh when tim was like my vote is more important uh hey are are, are you a big survivor fan hunter was like oh oh, uh, uh, yeah i know a little bit meanwhile he's got the whole obstacle course in his basement and everything so uh i just thought that was a little funny uh, yeah but what did you think about this um this journey challenge 
I liked it. I like it, but I would have I would have epically failed. I would have I would have just walked away, honestly. <laughs> I, I, just put them in I don't even know what my logo looks like. I don't even at this point. Like, if it doesn't have the number on it, I don't think I could point it out. Well, the the I think it would have the the forties would have the number on it, and then the rest of them I think have the season name. Okay, um, okay, okay. I'm the yeah. opposite. I did not like it, but I would have been able to do it really easily. Oh, okay, really? Jelinski. Not to okay. toot my own horn, but okay, Jelinski. Um, I would have been terrible. I don't, yeah, I don't have the challenges in my basement, but I can name <laughs> the logos. Um, I just thought it was sort of like, it, I think they loved maybe that moment with Jake last season being like, okay, Denise, Gabler, whatever. And then they were like, let's, we need another moment of like a fan really shining. But it's like watching someone order seasons, like even watching the challenge, we can't even see the, really the logos. Like they just flash the 20 logos on screen. I'm like, I'm not pausing that to do this. Like, um, yeah, I thought great. there could have been like a better way to kind of see. See, I'm gonna disagree with y'all. I love it. There are, Noel, we've been at parties where a fan will come up to us and say, Your birthday, what hospital you were born oh, in. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so there are fans out there that know, uh, it. That know it. Yeah. What I loved about it was I feel like uh, Hunter illuminated, and here we go again, episode five, and I'm bringing up James Jones's name. James yeah, Jones yeah, always yeah. says that there is a difference in the, the new fans of Survivor that are like COVID fans as opposed to fans that watch it week by week. Like if you binge an episode, if you binge a season, it's different than watching it week by week and having that anticipation. It takes something yeah. away. But I think what it illuminated with Hunter, which he said that like essentially his buddy got him into Survivor and oh, do we know what is the first season of Survivor that he watched that was on Netflix? Season 28. Uh, wait, but wait, 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 wait. That that is a fact. Is that, confirmed? Oh, that is confirmed. Go to is Twitter. That's why you said his buddy got him into it during college, which it wouldn't have and, been. And my and Hunter is about as old as I am. So college was we were in COVID. COVID. How old is Hunter? He's like 27, right? Okay. COVID was four years ago. Yeah. Anyway, right. it's confirmed because I tweeted, I said, Hunter better get season 28 right. Uh, and he retweeted and said, it's the first season I watched. Okay. okay? Oh. And it's not because it's 28, it's because of me. Okay. So y'all so no, no. know. I love that. Sorry, I was but, just I was wondering in the timeline of if you watch on Netflix, but 28, great season to start with in general. And okay, it was one of the only survivors to go number one on Netflix as well. Okay, just to, if, if we if we uh, toot in our horn. But I just think it illuminates this new uh, era of fan where it's like they just discovered it and then Hulu or Paramount Plus, like the greatest episode. So it's like, actually, they may not know how and why the order is. So maybe I do agree with y'all that I do like it, but maybe it just should have been something else to it, like match yeah. something with the season. Or I, I even saw someone say, like, maybe they need to order the winners because then you might be reflecting on, like, how did they play the game? That would have been cool. But see, I feel like that's too easy. I mean, I just associate but the like have like a Like, have, like, a picture of their faces, or like, instead. Third the third boot of each season. Now, that's a challenge. Well, the logos is, is probably the easiest, I feel like. like what I, I would think say it's, it's the hardest. I, I couldn't do it. Like you, you name a season, I could tell you what season it was. Like I don't think that's that hard. So then, obviously, you're gonna be able to order that. But um, oh, not, I'm not saying everyone could. I'm not saying everyone could do that. The thing is, the, the complaint that I have that I've seen the sentiment online is that I think these challenges should test your abilities as like a survivor player or in challenges, right? Like a good puzzle or a good physical competition or a social competition. You could be a phenomenal survivor player and not know the order of the seasons, yeah. but now you're getting punished because you haven't. It's sort but, of like self-aggrandizing of survivor to be like, if you want to win, you got to watch your survivor. Like our show is great. No, see, I'm going to disagree with you, Jack, because it's like, yeah, I want you to test my social game. I want you to test my physical game. I want you to test my knowledge of survivor. I want you to test a lot of these things some of them i'm going to be great at others i'm not going to be great at and i don't want everyone to ace and get it so i i yeah, stand well, by it. i like it i i agree that not everyone's gonna be good at everything but that's why i'm saying knowing the order of survivor seasons 
is not a skill that should at all be necessary to win the game, right? I mean, like, yeah, it, some people might be good at puzzles and not good at like running, and that's fine, and you use your strengths and weaknesses, or vice versa. But it's just sort of weird to be like, like to go on a show, and you might be a great social player, a great strategic player, a great physical player, and they're like, oh, but you don't know the the order of our seasons. You lose your vote. Like you might go home because of that. It's just. Again, I, I think I like this song. What's up? You got to adapt. But you can't adapt. You, you're just not going to, like, figure that out. I mean, yeah, and if you knew it, you would have got the advantage. I, I feel like I like things like that because I want to weaken some of the stronger players. That's what gives, like, the game its level ability because say someone like a Hunter was on the chopping block, he lost it, now someone like a Venus could. I just like the possibility, so I don't want it to be something that, everyone could be great at. I think it would be really cool that they could do on a journey, like instead of just sending two people home is like doing something like a big brother challenge where they're like behind, like say if there's like bamboo things and like they couldn't see each other and then they had to like, and then it was like a survivor trivia of like five yeah. questions and they don't know if they got their answers right or wrong. And the only time that they're going to know is like when they have to go back to camp and they have to check tree mail and see if they got the advantage. I think that would be like something really cool because, because then like, then the people don't know who got, who has it. Um, and something and then like send home Q and Tim two minutes into the journey. Yeah. It, like, it's like, why bring them along? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I totally just have agree. the winning, just have the winning per tribe that won only send one person to the journey. I, that would, that would kind of be cool. I don't know. I these agree. journeys have been so hard like this season. <laughs> I mean, I don't think, I think, what are we over three? Uh, really like on much. people, I don't think anybody won anything. Well, Maria and Tevin won extra votes. Oh, yeah, in yeah, that yeah first okay. one. But uh, Hunter, Ben, and Banu. Or whoever the who was the third person? Was it Banu, Ben, and who was the third person? They couldn't put the box together. Oh, or maybe it was just Banu and Ben. Two of them. Yeah, Banu yeah. Banu and Ben. Hunter, even the savvy challenge that they failed that. Um, yeah, the challenge. I know these hard. have been hard. These have been hard this season. Yeah. And Bryce, I don't mean to say I want the challenges to be easier. I just think that it should be something that is a little bit more. Like or a little bit less, like you you know it or you don't. Like it's just survive. Like having knowledge of the show should not determine you you being a better or worse player necessarily. Uh, but like, I, I think knowledge that... of the sense of like the the blatant facts of like this was season da da da. What I will say is maybe this is good for the show down the line because future players might be like, oh, I need to go back and study up and like and and watch more Survivor. So maybe that makes better gameplay down the line i don't know but um as someone who i think would have won this challenge i still don't think it's a great challenge okay jet <laughs> okay because I, i'm not we have noel here so i'm not going to sit here and <laughs> argue with you because i could because i would say then why don't you have that same sentiment about the last week's journey of the blocks where no one got the blocks puzzle. and uh, you should know how to do a puzzle going on Survivor. You don't need to know, like, the, the, the chronological order of all the seasons to go play Survivor. But to do it, you should be able to do a puzzle. Okay. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> we're, we're disagreeing a lot this week. I guys. mean, listen. I... I'm very entertained. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the same thing, though, right? Yeah. Because it's like, okay, well, if you came on a show and you couldn't even get a puzzle, then... Yeah, that's bad. Well, but a puzzle's a puzzle. A puzzle could be hard, but you you come in knowing like you're you might have to do a puzzle. But to be like, all right, name the third boot of every season is like, what? Why would I practice? But there are some super. There are some fans that know that. Of course, but I don't. I don't think. I'm, that's what I'm saying though. Being Cochran would know it. Cochran would have won this. A great survivor player though is someone who you know might be really good at puzzles, might be really physical, might be good at social competition or strategy. Which a puzzle or, or a savvy or a sweat challenge kind of all fall under, but to a, a great survivor player doesn't have to know the order of the season. But it's a journey; it's an advantage. Like it's not like you know, it's it's a blessing. It, it's not something that is necessarily needs to be given to you. You 
volunteer. But I don't. I don't want it to be easier. I just want the challenge to be different. Or like Noel said, I actually think you get all three of them there, and then maybe you say like, "Who wants Survivor Vanuatu?" And then they all have to like hold up an answer, and then whoever gets the most right wins. And then it's like a little bit more fun, and it's like trivia, and it's I not like it just all. like blatant like order the seasons. Like I mean, listen, I like it all. I like to have that as an option and different things. You just never know what you're going to get when you go on the journey, which is why it's like the journey is a gift and a curse. It's true. And at least they gave them like a heads up, like the biggest fan. But again, I, I also don't like it's small, but I don't like that we lose Tim and Q two minutes into this journey. Like give them something to do. Yeah. They got to ride the boat. They anyway, the lion. that's a terrible boat ride. <laughs> Anyways, Hunter loses his vote. Um, granted, he's already losing his vote because of the beware advantage he has. I know. How does that work? So maybe so, it's like not even that big of a deal. <laughs> Although I guess he'll get his vote back when he gets the beware advantage if he finds the idol. But does he? He still doesn't have a. Vote. But he, d- he doesn't have a vote regardless. Yeah, but that's kind of, like, in a way, like makes it a little less stressful. He's like, well, I'm not voting either way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's like I don't need to find this right also, now. This is really small. Um, back to when Hunter found the beware advantage, I think he does say that if they don't go to tribal before the merge. They will still have a chance to get their idol. Yeah. I actually hate that. Uh, I think this whole thing about you have to lose to find your beware advantage. I think that pre and we talked about it in the past creates this really fun idea of like, should I throw this challenge so that I could go find my idol? Wait, so how is it going to work if so? Say if they win out, like how do they get when they, they merge get a clue a to clue. find one before the merge, or, or maybe they merge and then they just rehide it for them and they like, okay. Them so like next week when they get the note saying like you're now like or drop your buffs, he can go over to the thing and get the clue. Yeah, I mean obviously they might be on a different beach, but I'm sure oh, in his okay. bag or something, they might be like, You survived all the way to the merge, but you still have a chance to find your idol. Like go to the beach and dig up near this, tr- like, you know? Yeah. And I think I, I wish they had to grapple with the fact that it's like, should we lose a challenge so I can find this? But instead it's like, there's no punishment for not losing. Yeah. Which is why it's also like, I think the easiest beware advantage that they've had. Um, Like I've said, it's like, you don't even have to worry about it until you lose. And then when you lose inevitably, since you have less time, it's going to be easier to find it. Um, But anyways, that's, kind of neither here nor there but i thought that was sort of annoying um so now we're back at sega and mm. they're going to their first tribal and they sort of like take a moment to all kind of appreciate the time they've had together 11 days very kumbaya and jen quickly slips off and finds uh her idol measuring things with the machete um again thought that was sort of a boring like journey for her to like I don't need to watch Bob the Builder like measuring things with a with a uh, okay all right now I'm gonna have to interject now I'm gonna have to interject say it uh, right what we not doing okay because listen we team Jim over here shout out to Jim but this no but first of all first, that's hard she had to wait until everybody oh. was like I I like doing it in front of everybody. Right. It has nothing I'll, to do with Jen. This is me saying like her running around with a machete measuring things is not that exciting. I don't know. When they were reading it on the TV, I was confused. So like, so like, out I was like I, you got if I was on the up. island, I'd be like, what do I have to do? Like, I I'm guess like, I'm not voting. Wait, what, what's, what's, like, I, I would I would not know that. how to do the perimeter. <laughs> I was terrible at math. Like I, I would not know how to do any of that. I would have been like, what? I would have been uh, like to production. Can you tell me how to do this? Like, <laughs> can you read this again? Uh, but it would have no. been funny if someone didn't know what like the diameter of the perimeter was. Kind of like me. in token jeans when Sandy's like, "What is a pace?" Like, she, you know, she had a clue. It was like it's ten paces from this. She's like, "Well, how? I don't know what a pace is." Um, I yeah, I don't know. I would I would have been screwed. So like, I mean, I hats off to her for knowing it, knowing it, getting it great job because i personally wouldn't have been able to do it i, I, I would have had to bring someone in and be like what the hell does this mean she did a great <laughs> job finding it. this wasn't a anti gem thing it Thank was you. it was more like the, the way that it was hidden it was not that fun to watch anybody have to go be like 
pull out their measuring tape and be like, okay, it's like, what if she got caught? Like, Jeb, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm just like, you know, waving the machete yeah. around. I was just curious how the perimeter of our boat in machete lengths. I was just wondering. Yeah. Um, just seeing like how many people could fit in the boat. Also, though, this is tough for Jem because she did a great job of finding it, but it, there might be an argument in my mind that the two hours she spent looking for it would have been better spent strategizing and not having her vote. I, I even wonder, because we see how things unfold and we see how Ben is saying that, like, he can visibly see her talking to other people and doing all this other stuff. I almost wonder if her getting that uh, idol, finding it, if it put a super pack on her that made her a little bit more confident and like steering this vote instead of really like trying to survive this vote. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I agree because yeah. I mean, we kind we of just put a target and, on our own back. Right. We see Ben and Tim, uh, you know, are on to her as someone who's not being straightforward with them. I also thought, and I don't know if this was before tribal or earlier in the episode, where Jen, I think it was earlier when Tim was sort of on the gem and was sort of pressing her a little bit and she oh. pressed back and she's like, now I got the target on Tim. So now it's either going to be Tim or it's going to be me. And she was like excited about it. I was like, miss, miss ma'am. Like you don't like the target doesn't, it doesn't have to be a you or them. You can just hang out and let the target be on other people. It doesn't have to be a battle here. I, I also felt like when Tim pressed her, right, I wonder if Tim was basically being like, what's up? We working together? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, of course, she took it the way that she took it because her back is against the wall. But I just wonder if what if she would have revealed that to him, what that would have helped. I also would have liked to see a little bit more of how Tim came to that conclusion, because it makes me think there are more conversations around Jim, like people knowing that it's Jim, that they just edited it out for us not to see it to make it a more thrilling episode. Because he kind of yeah. came to Jim like, yo, we know. Mm -hmm. I also just don't think she's as good of a liar as she thought she was. Uh, um, I want to know why he said that to her. What was the suspicion? Like, why? Right. I was with, so, and I watched last night's episode with Charlie last night. And then, like, afterwards, we did, like, a QA, and a And I literally on the stage asked, like, in front of all the fans, I'm like, did you know that she had an idol? And he was like, I can't answer this question because uh -huh. of, like, production. I was just like, I want to know. Like, was it talked about? Because yeah. why, how did he just randomly come, like, it was, they didn't even talk, like, and I'm hoping that, like, they could maybe touch on it a little bit next episode of like why this came to a conclusion of because I want to know saw if they machete and they were like she's looking for something like right <laughs> like that's what I want to like why or I want to know if they knew that she went home with an idol too I I would love to know that like but yeah. they always keep us on our toes they do and like I mentioned earlier when it comes to the strategic discussions before tribal here it becomes this thing of like well there could be beware out advantage out there like we need to split between tim and charlie or tim and uh ben and people are most wary of tim having something that's and true now, yeah now ben becomes the target but the swing vote charlie is like well i don't want to do ben ben's my ally and that's why it now falls onto gem and she sort of dug her own grave with this move whereas i like i said earlier I, I think if she doesn't do this whole beware advantage fiasco i think people pretty confidently put their votes on tim um but props to charlie he's able to steer he's acknowledges he's like, i don't want to lose ben so how do i go to maria and make this happen in a, in a way that i'm not pushing too far too hard to keep that this is where I worry for Dr. Maria because, you know, Dr. Maria is like she's one of my winner picks. And clearly we see a lot where it is Charlie and Dr. Maria trying to figure out, do we go with Liz and Jim or do we go with Tim and Ben? And we see Dr. Maria saying, like, I trust Jim and Liz. And like, you know, we have the 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 ladies alliance. And this is where it worries me because we see where Dr. Uh, Maria went. And I feel like. Did you just lose a number? Like, I don't know. It just worries me because, well, I mean, you say no, but I, I, I just feel like I, even if you can't trust Jim, 
it's a numbers game, and I would have rather Dr. Maria, like one of the boys, go uh, to keep Dr. Maria specifically stronger, in my opinion. Because but I'm okay, Dr. Maria, I totally get where you're coming from because. As the swing votes, Charlie obviously was the one who took the reins a little bit more here. Yeah, okay. His, his close ally, Ben. I think Maria was actually more cool with it than maybe the edit showed. Because we know Maria has a very solid relationship with Tim. At least in the sense that Tim is now is calling her his number one his ally. His number one, okay. So I still think there's so many paths forward for Maria to work with Tim to work right. with Ben by extension, obviously to work with Charlie. So even if she's not that close with Ben, I think she's very close with Tim, very close with Charlie. And if they feel like um, Ben is someone that they could use as a number, I actually think that's maybe better for Maria's game than to, you know, sort of overshadow Charlie, take out someone that would work with Charlie, and then have this whole split, see the Sega split of like, because I even think Mariah here, gets left out of the vote, but I think they could pull her back in pretty easily. Um, I still think Charlie wants to work with Mariah. I still think Maria wants to work with Mariah. I still think Ben would be game. So I think for Maria, this is actually going to, of course, having Jem is not bad, but we've seen Jem is not that trustworthy just in the sense that she's going to run around and like cause a little bit of chaos. So I, mean... I think going through a merge, Sega could still be really strong here. Uh, and I think that's a lot of it is that, Maria was flexible here and realized that she'd still have a lot of social avenues um, taking out Jeff. Did Maria have to use her extra vote this mm. no, round? No, she didn't have to. And I was, I'm was i glad you brought this up because this was a really interesting conversation that I wanted to have with you guys. Some people were very critical of her wasting it. I actually think it was really, really good of her to use it. Um, was it po Did anybody know that she had it? Well, I'm not sure. It, did she tell them? I think, I think like maybe at least Charlie knew. Okay. And I, I, I reckon that some planning took place. So I think Ben informed them that he didn't have a vote, right? And so okay, yeah. I think that if you if so, we see that Maria actually. Oh, spelled, okay. Yeah. Maria actually also when she votes writes and spells gem two different ways. Mm, and so I, think, I think Maria might here actually be like. You know what, Ben? I'm gonna cast one of my votes as if it was you to give you some cover to keep your lie intact. Oh, now, maybe, that, spell. maybe that's like um, all like theory or like uh, hype. No, like, but that's, probably, that's probably right. I think that's might be what happened. And again, I think that's a testament to Maria um, okay. being flexible, taking the you know taking some of the responsibility on her and making a compromise. But if I'm someone like a Ben here, I'm gonna be like Maria. You are the best. Like I will work with you. Um, so that's again, great, I, yeah, that's a great point with like her social game too. It's like, she's like, listen, I have your back on this. So I have mine. Okay. And, yeah. so, and people okay. know about her extra vote. And I think a lot of times, especially in the new era, we see people trying to hold on to these things for like the perfect moment. Right. But I think her using it here is like, you're going to solidify that you're on the right side of the vote. Um, you're going to give yourself some options with how you want to kind of frame the vote. And people know about her extra vote. Maybe it's better just get rid of that before the merge. And it's not like an added factor to why people might want to take you out. Now she's back to square one in terms of advantages, but she's in a great social position. So I really think despite the fact that Maria like compromised on voting out um, Jem, I really, really think this was a really good episode for her. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a agree with you. you, you Do we give me. credit to Maria or Carly, uh, Charlie for this though? First I think more Charlie. Charlie. I think Charlie was the player of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Maria, I, I can really respect her being like, okay, my close ally is coming to me with this plan. What's the best way that I can make it work? And I think yeah, she yeah. really I and think I, she really optimized. I agree. Yes. I agree. And and like going forward in the game, this this is the type of game move that is critical in the new era because it goes undetected. And this mm -hmm. is something that you can like bring up like way yeah. down the line right. but and it doesn't you're it, like you don't look like as a tribe as a whole right now like i don't think everyone's looking at maria like oh my god she's some huge strategic exactly. game player so i think it was yeah i that's a yeah, very good point your level a little bit yeah that, that's a very good point i think sega could have some shades of reba last season where you know yanu's kind of like lulu they get decimated 
Nami is sort of like um, Bello. Bello, where they're winning a lot, but they have fractures. But now I really think that this this group of remaining Sega could stay pretty tight. Like, I don't think they're going to jump to flip on each other going into the merge. And I think this group of Sega is going to, for the most part, stay intact pretty far, like at least for a few votes and have a lot of options to make things happen. Yeah, they're probably the the tightest unit out of all of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see and, kind of who sticks with who. Right, and especially with this Meat Shield Alliance emerging, it will be so interesting to see uh, how things develop. Uh, but again, shout out to Jack because I was ready to be yelling at Dr. Maria like, what is you doing? Why would you give your power away? But shout out to the baby boy Jackery for making me see that Dr. Maria is still in a, a good place. Yeah. I agree. Um, and also, I don't care what nobody say. Shout out to Team Sneaky Sneaky. Um, shout out to Jem. She went home, but you know. She I played always, a good and hard game. Right. And I yeah. always say, in order to win Survivor, you have to play to win. But mm -hmm. when you play to win, you might go home. So yes. I'm This episode it. was definitely one of the most entertaining ones of the season so far. And that's absolutely you know, all part two gem. So uh, not, I know I was critical of some of the moves, but as far as television goes, she she brought some good TV in a, in a great episode. And we have the merge, it looks like, next episode. So hopefully the season continues to sort of um, roll on forward and gain some momentum. Is there 12 people left? 13. 13 people. That's still a lot. It'll probably be another so, merge. So it's going to be the same thing. So like one person's going to go home and then they're going to merge. And then they're, they must be the, the next person that goes home doesn't make the jury. Yeah. What's I want to be surprised. I think next will probably be mergatory. And then maybe they'll do that double. Like they split up into two groups again. Oh yeah. I, yeah, because like. I don't, I don't, I don't like how someone makes the merge, but they don't make the jury. Tell I don't me, like talk, it. Talk to me. Talk to me. No. Yeah. No, nah, I think that's just be. I mean, I mean, it's happened to so many people, but like it happened to Dwight. Like it, I just remember like talking about it with him all day. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. And he was like, it's gonna happen. He was like, someone's gonna go home. That's. I'm like, no. And then it happened to him, and it was just like, I hated it. It was because. Yeah. He's part of the merge. He's on the freaking jury. Right. But yeah, All because these, like, then weird merge like twists and turns in the new era. Really not a fan. I, mean, I kind of wish it just did like merge, merge. Yeah. Box. yeah. There you go. Give everyone a feast, like just call yeah, okay. it. And like some of the best votes are right at the merge where there's like 11, 12, 13 people left. Um, I mean, it could just like Kageon jumps to mind when they send Sarah home. Uh, one of the best episodes of Survivor ever, in my opinion. Uh, second chances jumps to mind when Kelly Wentworth plays her idol and idol Savage mm -hmm. out. I mean, these are all with more numbers available to, to vote together or to vote out. It mm -hmm. just makes the dynamic so much more interesting. But Survivor, for some reason, the, in the new era, takes these big numbers and tries to break them up into smaller groups, which just kind of limits what you can do. Yeah, and I don't like I don't like how half the group is safe. Yeah, either. Right. Yeah, it's just it's like I get it. Like the first. Five seasons, they've done it. It was great. All right, let's try something new a little bit because now everybody's expecting it. You know what I mean? Like, Definitely. Yeah. Well, regardless, we're still going to be tuning in uh, and seeing what Merge Atori gives. Uh, this is a great episode, Noel. Thank you so much for taking time out of your training. Thank you so much for having me, always. Here on the Purple Pants Absolutely. Podcast. We love you and appreciate you so much. Jack. Love you guys. We appreciate you. Uh, I, I'll see you next week to argue some more with you. Oh, yeah. It's crazy we're arguing <laughs> the merge. It feels like the season just started. Right? It's crazy to think that if this was Kageon, I could be actually considered to make the merge. But <laughs> I digress. Well, thank you yeah. guys so much for listening. Uh, next week, Bryce and Wynn uh, will be in Pittsburgh for the BWP Tour 46. After that, we'll be in Chicago. Or I'm lying. We'll be in Pittsburgh, Dallas, Chicago, Boston. Philadelphia, and then Indigit in New York. You can get your tickets uh, for the Bryson Wynn Tour 46. It will be an amazing time with some amazing guests. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye, everyone. Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News.
Bye for you.